Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to one of the games from 9 round of Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Vegas Z 2020. Uh, we have a very important game for today uh, between Alireza Firuzia, who was the leader after 8 round uh, of this tournament, and he play as white. His ranking is 2723 and he is Iranian prodigy, 16 years old, really great last year, and uh, he play under under um, FIDE flag at this moment uh, because of the boycott of Iranian uh, government to Israeli uh, players. So uh, Firuzia was not allowed to play uh, in a Moscow tournament. Uh, and then he said just, OK, I don't care about the politics and all that stuff. I want to play good chess. Uh, so he resigned from uh, being a member of Iranian Chess Federation and he is living in um, France now. And, and, and also uh, his future is unknown for now, uh, not sure he gonna uh, play still for Iran, uh, do some negotiation, probably not. And the other option is you change nationality to French uh, or maybe play for uh, USA. So there are a couple of options. We don't know the future, but uh, as for now, uh, feed the flag is the way to go. And uh, as black, we have Magnus Carlsen, actual world champion. His ranking is incredible, 2872. The best player in the world, the highest ranking in the world. And for a couple of years, he is um, unbeaten. Uh, he is still world champion. And in the classical game format, he haven't lost probably 100 13 games he is this is the new world record of not losing streak so uh, a really great um, great achievement and definitely he is a favorite even he play as black so that's being said uh, let's jump into the game we have e4 by firuzia and magnus often play c5 a sicilian defense but here he didn't let uh, alireza to get for some variation aggressive variations so he play e5 and now we have knight f3 knight c6 and bishop on b5 rui lopez on the board knight f6 now d3 uh, there are other possibilities of course in this situation is one of the most popular lines uh, so d3 is one of them and magnus carlsen in the interview said okay i i like d3 uh, uh, i played that a lot of times uh, so most of the uh, you know important games in this opening uh, by magnus carlsen he played well as black he played well, well as white as well so he knows everything about that opening and so let's see how it's going uh, d6 was played by magnus now we have c3 and a6 so uh, bishop goes on a4 and now we have bishop on e7 uh, we have castle castle and here rook e1 by alireza rook e8 Knight B on D2, all this is uh, pretty standard stuff, not the most popular lines, but um, a very solid one. Bishop on F8, uh, so uh, giving the way for the rook to defend um, E5 if anything happened in the center and also allow to, to, do, to play, uh, for example, G6 and fianchetto the, the bishop. And here we have h3, taking the space for the minor pieces from uh, black. And here b5, attacking the bishop. Bishop go on b uh, on c2, so c2 is prepared by this move c3. And here we have bishop on b7, so pretty standard so far. d4, not the most popular, but uh, but it's still very, very playable. Actually, we, we are moving to the variation um, by, by different moves which is much more popular and here we have g6 uh, and here the most popular move would be d5 um, this was played uh, hundreds of time uh, but here uh, alireza play a3 silent move which which is um, all okay and uh, usually after d5 knight on b8 is played anyway so magnus first play knight on b8 
And here Alireza should go for some plan of uh, maybe b3, maybe b4, that would make sense after a3. And, um, and after that, just bring the bishop to the to this diagonal and to move the rook on c1 and that would be totally totally fine in that position uh, however he played d5 first and this position was not reached uh, at least i didn't find it uh, so so something is not right about that but what could it be uh, so let's see what magnus play after that because out of nothing in the V very known position uh, something is going on we have c6 so first challenging the center we have c4 so answer is um, defending of course now we have knight b to d7 and we have a4 a4 um, so it's second move by this pawn uh, trying to you know create some some tensions here and we have Queen c7, um, nothing special, but connecting the rooks and also give the uh, possibility uh, uh, for black to create uh, some powerful battery here. And now we have b3, so consolidating this um, pawn chain, but um, you know, all the tensions are still here. Uh, white have the pawns and black also, so, so somebody has to, you know, um, to decide to 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 do something with the tensions we have rook e on c8 as planned and and here is the thing now uh, magnus can go take on d5 and after for example taking this is the problem this bishop is under attack and if bishop is moved for example uh, on d3 uh, it's impossible actually because after c on d5 and c on d5 the queen would come and double attack the unprotected pieces as you see these pieces are not protected um, by anything uh, so e d5 would be play, but here bishop d5 can be sacrificed temporary, and after c takes on d5, queen c3 could be play anyway, and and here just the the best option for white would be um, taking what can can take and uh, sacrificing the exchange going back to uh, c4 getting this strong position for for this pawn chain but it's uh, exchange down very difficult that's um, not really an option to to do so the problems start to grow here this uh, bishop is not developed yet rook is not developed yet it's quite a problem we have rook on a2 then and here uh, Magnus started to simplify the position and see who understand this position better. Uh, B takes on C4, B takes on C4, and now we have A5, another great move, which um, doesn't allow uh, white to push the pawn, uh, which would be dangerous, but also giving the spot for the light square bishop. And this bishop would be much more active here, attacking C4, uh, and also if if any exchange then infiltrating the the white territory so pretty great move this a5 we have knight on f1 so alireza try to remaneuver the the bishops and try to do something with his pieces as you see it looks like he has a lot of space and can do something actually uh, here but but these pieces are totally uncoordinated and uh, and they actually don't have uh, many good moves so bishop on a6 was played as planned knight e3 so remaneuvering the knight now now knight can um, defend the c4 um, pawn as it was attacked by the bishop and now we have knight c5 so another uh, nice move this outpost for um, for the knight is uh, pretty impressive and now we have knight on d2 so bringing more defender to the c4 and now maybe uh, one of these knight could do something however there are not many great moves so for for white so far uh, c takes on d5 c takes on d5 uh, but but this uh, actually is not really great uh, in this position white should try to 
exchange uh, more pieces to simplify the position and try to fight for a draw. Uh, so knight on d5 would be better. C takes on d5 and for example knight d3 forcing to exchange the minor pieces. Uh, and after queen f3, uh, yes, white would stay um, uh, worse because of the bishop pair and more active pieces, but at least white would achieve to exchanging some um, bad pieces for quite good um, knight on c5. So uh, maybe that would be slightly better way to go. Uh, however, c on d5 was played and now we have rook a on b8. Bishop on a3, so developing in a similar uh, fashion and queen on d8. So Magnus is not uh, in hurry. If white want to sacrifice the bishop pair and play uh, and take, for example, this knight, um, then black would go uh, with tempo and um, take that knight with the rook and then double the rook and have the quite mm, nice game. Queen f3 was played and here h5. h5 doesn't allow white to continue their, their maneuvers on the, uh, on the king side. Uh, so, so that's another interesting move and now we have rook a on to a1. Uh, so there is nothing more Al Alireza can play, there, there he, he simply doesn't have any plan. It looks like he is totally overplayed by the world champion. Bishop on h6 and look at this now what's going on. Bishops slicing the 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 chessboard like crazy this is these are bishops from hell definitely um the thing here uh really active position by magnus carlsen controlling most of the uh, chessboard rook a on b1 by firuzia he want to exchange more pieces and for example here if magnus play something slower king g7 defending f6 then uh, actually firuzia could exchange more pieces in his favor and after knight e on c4 this would be probably quite some chances for uh, white because there is a pass pawn protected pass pawn so um, that would be not really in favor of uh, magnus carlsen this is why he uh, don't play the slow moves he play actively exchange on b1 the rooks and then play g king on g7 and here actually White doesn't have really uh, too many great moves. The rook controls B file, but um, can't move anywhere because everything is actually uh, protected a couple of times, so uh, not really a thing. Uh, so knight E on F1 was played. Uh, pretty waiting move, but here Magnus play another great move, H4. H4 actually squeezing um, white uh, of playing white doesn't have good moves uh, nothing can be played so knight e3 going back but then bishop on f4 squeezing even more and challenging um, alireza hey you cannot play this g3 move and Ali alireza what i cannot play this move hold my beer and um, you know queen on c7 of course i'm joking but alireza actually played this g3 and it's not really great move uh, maybe better would be rook on e1 actually and then after knight h7 bishop pinning this um, this pawn and actually queen can take um, on f4 so probably would have to play like king g8 to get out of this pin and after queen a3 moving from the harm way on the king side knight g5 would be played and and yes still magnus has a lot of um, advantage here but uh, white would have more chances to survive um, but he played g3 and after h takes on g3 f takes on g3 actually now this diagonal is is open so um there is another problem here now queen can come and attack um, on this way uh, so we have bishop on h6 first uh, retreating after doing the job on f4 and now we have h4 and and this is really 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 bad move uh, actually alireza do nothing about this threat 
And here Ali Reza, if he uh, move king on g2, which uh, which looks um, quite okay, queen a7 would still be played. And after rook b2, uh, bringing some defender on the second rank, uh, for example, we would have bishop takes on f1, knight, knight takes on f1, bishop c1, exchanging some pieces on the queen side. And now knight a6 so this defender was lured to a3 and now this is the threat to take this bishop so bishop would move to d3 queen c5 attacking the rook so rook has to move to a1 and now knight g5 threatening the um the queen queen e2 and now for example queen d4 so uh position of black is totally dominating rook is under attack this pawn is under attack three times and it's defended only twice so uh, much better for for black this is why h4 was played uh, but it's not really really better we have queen d7 and now look at this move this d7 queen is centralized now can take an action with attacking the uh, the a4 pawn so that is the one thing but also if needed can be moved to the king side in some rapid attacks there are some um, some tricks here and uh, white really has to be very very careful here so king g2 was played first uh, not allowing the the, the move to uh, h3 but now we have simply knight a4 so winning the winning the pawn and bishop a4 queen a4 and here we have bishop on d6 so a counter attack and creating the pass pawn by ali reza so quite interesting and also attacking the uh, e5 pawn and this is really really powerful attack because now this knight actually can't be defended this uh, bishop can help to defend uh queen can't really come to to defend the knight so first defend the e5 pawn that's the the most important thing uh, of course and we have queen f2 uh, and in this position uh, magnus carlsen just exchange so pretty simple and bishop take on f1 so exchanging even more pieces and here alireza firuja actually resigned the game he don't see uh, chances to play so for example, if he take by knight, what would happen? Uh, knight e4 with check and king e3, king uh, f3, and then take the bishop and win, and black would have easy win with the one minor piece up. So that would be, wouldn't be a way, but what would happen if king f1 is played? This is uh, pretty interesting. For example, bishop d2, so it doesn't look good for white, but then bishop e5 pinning this knight and actually this king can't move there because uh, black would just lose this knight and now rook on b6 is coming so this double attack uh, would be very very strong uh, so what black maybe could play would be um, rook on e8 but that doesn't really work because white would play bishop on a1 rook takes on e4 and now this pawn is pretty strong d6 could be play and now this rook actually can't go because um, this is controlled by the bishop so for example rook on e6 now d7 rook on d6 attacking this pawn but now rook b6 that's so powerful move so for example rook on d7 bishop takes on f6 uh, king h6 and now g4 so now we have some mating ideas now white would try to checkmate uh, black so black has to be really careful so for example bishop on f4 defending the b8 but rook a6 that's interesting now still uh, checkmate is coming so um, probably rook on d6 trying to exchange but now we would have bishop on g5 with check 
uh, king g7 and white would take on a5 and that would be pretty equal uh, and that would be uh, you know some drawing chances for uh, for Alireza Firuzia. So he still had some chances to, to trick Magnus Carlsen. Probably that wouldn't happen uh, because of course Magnus Carlsen uh, in this position he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't go for uh, Rook on e8 which it, it looks okay but actually uh, if calculations uh, are done properly then Bishop on c3 uh is winning for black and and yes rook c1 very powerful move now uh the bishop is pinned but actually after bishop e5 rook takes on c8 and bishop takes on g3 rook c4 defending uh black would have two pieces for the rook and it's still the game's still going Rook can have some plans and, and can just push the, the d pawn. so there is some counterplay. Uh, I think still Alireza Firuzia should try at least to, uh, to fight a bit longer. Um, but after bishop on f1, he just resigned the game. So Magnus Carlsen uh, won in style. He outplayed uh, Alireza Firuzia, young pretender, 16 years old boy from Iran, uh, really impressive career so far, uh, but that was not enough for uh, Magnus Carlsen, this, the strongest player in the world at this moment. And what is worth to mention, uh, Alireza Firuzia uh, has only one minute on his clock and this is the move uh, number 39. So uh, last moves are done in, in very in, in hurry, uh, so not maybe the best and precise move, but uh, Alireza Firuzia was definitely outplayed by um, world champion uh, so not not time yet to beat magnus carlsen in serious tournament and we have a standings uh, after round nine very interesting fabiano caruana is a leader now uh, he draw today uh, but uh, wesley so magnus carlsen jordan van forest and alireza firuzia have uh, five and a half points and uh, Magnus Carlsen still play against Wesley So. So if he wins, he's gonna be ser serious candidate to win the games. Uh, Caruana uh, have to play against uh, Firuzia still and against Jan Krzysztof Duda who has a very solid tournament, but also Magnus Carlsen uh, also play um, against Duda. So uh, really exciting to the end, uh, still a couple of rounds, we have uh, 13 rounds, so four more rounds. So yeah, as always, uh, I created a study on Leeches, link in the description. So if you want uh, to see more lines of this game, uh, go and check. And of course, if you like this video, click like. If you don't like this video, click unlike. Leave the comment, I would like to hear from you. Maybe you, you're gonna have some suggestion, maybe you want some uh, other games to be covered. Uh, and for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.